Hello and welcome, PML fans. I'm your host, Edwin Joe here, and with me I have the coach of the Rising Raichu, Devin. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today, Devin? Really good. How are you? Doing all right. It's going to be nice and rainy today, so. Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's go off with the first question. What made you want to join a draft league? Yeah, so I just I love getting into the competitive side of Pokemon. I always use you to kind of do VGC. I'm more so into doubles and stuff like that, but I'm not to singles as well. So when I had the opportunity to join this draft league, um, I just thought it would be really fun. You know, like getting to meet some more YouTubers and getting to kind of try out these Pokemon that otherwise might not have been chosen on your team. I just think it's a really kind of fun idea, so I was really interested in joining the draft. Yeah, that's always fun. Is this your first draft league? Yeah, actually, it's our first one. So I'm really excited to try it, especially since it's single battles as well. So it's like, it's a lot different than, you know, like a draft that would be for doubles. So it's going to be really exciting to see how it goes. Okay. And um, what drew you to the PML's draft style? Yeah, so kind of, I think just through seeing various channels and stuff like that, we came across a group on Facebook, and I wanted to join, I think it was a doubles tournament you guys were hosting at the time. I joined this, and I started kind of getting to see more of the things that the PML group and stuff offered, so then ended up getting the opportunity to join the league and everything, so grew from there. Okay. Well, yeah, we we love to have you here. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> no problem. And as we move on to our next question, of course, everyone wants to win, but strategically, what do you hope to accomplish with your team? Yeah, so I kind of, in the way I chose my Pokemon was, I wanted to have kind of variety that people won't know really what to expect. Like, of course, some Pokemon, like maybe... Porygon Z or Venusaur kind of have those few sets people know about, but I wanted to have it so Togekiss, Raichu, or some of the other Pokemon on my team can be made to be really different. Like they can be made to be surprisingly different so that people don't know what to expect. So I kind of want to learn lots more like new strategies that will kind of catch people off guard. So that's kind of my aim for this. Is to obviously do well and win, but also to have like really fun, really creative strategies. Okay, and um, I did, I you did make a change to your team already, correct? Yeah, so I kind of did some testing, and I originally chose Phalanx as one of my Pokemon, but having the treat was really good in the fact that it gets stronger, faster, and more defensive. But you can't switch out, so. Through trying some 6v6 battles, I just seen that it was more of a hindrance because it gives people a chance to bring in their tank or someone who can set up on it. So you kind of become really vulnerable using it. So I started thinking, you know, what can I bring in that benefits me, but also I don't lose any power from like losing Phalanx. And so I brought in a Lowland Persian, and since trying it out with the team, I just love it. I think it's so underrated. And it can do so many things, so I just think it's a really good Pokemon. Yeah, and um, by doing that, you lose your fighting type, but gain a second dark type. How do you think that plays out? Yeah, so kind of the way it works is, since I have Alolan Persian, I kind of have the aspect of, I can make a supportive kind of Pokemon, rather than, you know, Phalanx is kind of limited to just attacking kind of things. Mm -hmm. So not having the fighting type, I found actually doesn't impact the team too much because many of the Pokemon can learn fighting type moves. And I kind of find with Togekiss especially, it destroys any kind of Pokemon that needs the fighting type. Like lots of Pokemon who are steel types and stuff are weak to fire types that Togekiss can have Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Heat Wave. I can have all these kind of moves on the other Pokemon, so... I find for normal types especially, I have coverage or I can even go down the toxic route or these kind of things too. So I didn't really find losing Phalanx affected the team too much. I think having a Lowland Persian just gave me more options for the team. Okay. Because um, 
since you did lose a, a fighting type for a dark type, and you have Drapion, who's a tier four. Yeah. Um, Danny did just drop his uh, Surfetch, so I was wondering if you were contemplating that any, or if you even thought about it. Ah, no, I think for me it was just more so the no retreat. I just like at the beginning I wanted that strong fighting type because you know people bring in Pokemon like Snorlax and stuff. I wanted to be able to defeat it easily. Mm-hmm. But I noticed even against the Snorlax, Phalanx wasn't able to kill it without two or three hits. So I was like, oh, I'm trapping myself in battle, giving enemies the opportunity to set up. It's not a good idea. So I wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> and I think um, maybe Danny dropping the Surfetch, maybe he had some similar issues, or maybe he thought that that secondary typing Glade has would really benefit the team more. I think fighting types are obviously really strong, but it depends on the team you're against. Like, my team has a few Pokemon who are weak to fighting, but many Pokemon that resist it. Yeah. Like, I have lots of fairies. I have Zatu, Raichu, Venusaur. Drapion's only weakness is Ground-type, for example. So even though he is dark, he doesn't have that weakness. Mm-hmm. So it's... I think the fighting types... It kind of depends on the team, but for me, I just found that I wasn't scared of them. So I think him dropping the Surfetch and having that delayed is definitely a good choice because it gives us secondary typing and gives him more options. I think for me, dropping the Phalanx for the Persian gives me more options as well. So. Okay. Well, that's something the analysts are going to have to think about before this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they actually thought um, Danny dropping the Surfetch was a hindrance a little bit to his team, but maybe he has something up oh. his sleeve with the Gallade. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, I think that. maybe since it's a little bit quicker, he has more choices, maybe choice band or something. Or maybe since there's lots of dark types, he's thinking that his justified ability will help him in some ways. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it kind of depends what he does. He could go to focus Sashiru or choice band or choice scarf. So let's see what he does with it in the end. But I think it was a good choice. I like Surfetch, but it's not so fast that it outpaces the really good Pokemon that people have. Mm-hmm. Like Togekiss would just destroy it, for example. True. Alright, now back to your team. Sorry, I got a little off track there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which Pokemon that you drafted do you think will have the biggest impact on your season? Yeah, so it's really hard. Like, I know from doing single battles myself, a few of the Pokemon who really stand out to me you know, it really differs a lot, but I think I'm going to surprise people with Drapion. I find that he works really well in lots of matches, and he's getting lots of kills from me. Or even he, I have a tankier Drapion as well that works really well. So I think Drapion's going to surprise people, but obviously I think the Togekiss and Porygon Z are such powerhouses that they can take on lots of the teams really well. I think having a ghost type, like some of the teams have ghost Pokemon, that kind of threatens Porygon Z, but if I just predict it right, I can get a big hit in, and especially because Porygon gets some dark moves and stuff, so I think, yeah, those are a few of the hitters on the team. Okay, and I've drafted Drapion a couple of times. Have you been experimenting with some uh, agility Drapion or Swords Dance Drapions? Yeah, definitely. Like, there's a few different ones. I'm not going to give it away. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have some sets that I think work really well with him. And also, because he is really defensive, has good health and stuff, if you put on a Salt Fest, he gets so tanky as well. So he really is just so versatile in what he can do. And only having that ground weakness, which I kind of avoid because I have Togekiss and Zatu, mm-hmm. it just... Yeah, I think it just works really well. I think it's a really good Pokemon for the team. Yeah, and it's pretty cool with the, the Drapion AV uh, Fell Stinger, if you get it in on a weaker opponent. So yeah. That plus <laughs> yeah, I did that a few times as well, and it works so well. Especially in 6v6, because you always will get a chance maybe to pick somebody off. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Maybe it's on one of the sets. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next question here. What team do you think will be your biggest challenge this season? Yeah, so 
I know most people are going to say the LA Nido Kings because they have the Cinderace and some really powerful Pokemon, but I'm kind of thinking more so maybe your own team oh, because you do have yeah exactly because you do have that Blastoise, which I think from my has some counters and stuff against it. But I'm just scared of that Shell Smash Dynamax combo. I think that in particular is really strong and the Charizard and such as well. So I think for for that reason, I would say more so your team would be the team that I would be that would be the most competition maybe. But there are some really good teams, so I think each team themselves has a few Pokemon that I think is going to be difficult. But I do have sets in mind, so I'm really excited to try them out. And hopefully, I think I should do really well. Let's see. Yeah, I, I appreciate that you actually saying my team's kind of a threat, because most people don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think Shell Smash, especially with Blastoise or Cloyster or these kind of Pokemon, is so powerful. Water types as well, like Blastoise can heal once he gets the rain up. So it can just be really annoying, and that white herb kind of combination. So yeah, definitely, I'd say that's one of the things. Because I think Cinderace and such, they are scary Pokemon, but they are more predictable. Like you know, Cinderace is going to just be fast attacking, mm -hmm. so you can kind of combat that with defensive or stuff like that. Um, whereas those Pokemon who kind of can do it all, like Blastoise and such, are kind of scary. So yeah, definitely. Like, I'd say that's the reason why I would vote for your team. Okay. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of had that voting uh, on the voting. I had that picking in mind when I was drafting. I really wanted the, you know, jack of all trades team. So it's hard yeah. to pinpoint what I'm bringing every week. Exactly. I kind of tried that myself with lots of my Pokemon. I wanted to have, you know. Some Pokemon, I think people are going to be really surprised because I have weird strategies. I have some older Pokemon with weird moves that I've transferred over. Like, thankfully, I hoard all my Pokemon games, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm able to go and get some weird move tutors from ages ago and then just transfer all the way with Pokebank and stuff. So, who knows? Maybe I have some weird sets people won't expect. That's definitely going to be interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Also, uh... I'm sure you watched the great analysis video, and yeah. the analyst uh, kind of talked about your team about how you only have Gigalith as reliable stealth rocks, and you only have Zatu kind of to remove them. Um, mm -hmm. how, do you feel your team is weak to hazards? You see, the thing is, I think having this thing of transfer moves, it means even Togekiss could get Defog, for example. So I kind of, I have the Togekiss and Zatu if I want to remove some stuff, or I do have Gigalith for rocks. I also have some weird Toxic Spikes and Spikes options with Drapion as well. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to depend too much as well on hazards. I think people lots of the time kind of focus on, I need to get rocks up, I need to rapid spin, I need to get rocks up. So I kind of like to have more... The stuff like Zatu, Magic Bounce, you know, I'll play off the enemy trying to set it up. I'll deny them maybe with a taunt or stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I think um, hazards are definitely really strong, but I have the option to remove them or use it against the enemy. You know, they're going to waste a turn setting up rocks to do something else. So, yeah, I think definitely I see what people could think of. Oh, the team is a bit weak to it, but... I think just really Togekiss and Zatu damage from rocks, everyone else kind of resists it almost. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm interested to see what happens, but I think my team has good answers for it that people might not expect. Okay. And <clears throat> I might as well end it off on this last final question. I'm sure you've heard it being explained in the other videos. If you had a, what is it called? If you had a weird superpower, not the traditional kind, what would it be? Of course, for example, mine was I'd be able to summon my favorite foods whenever I wanted. So, yeah. <laughs> so probably 
and it's a very gamer answer probably, but I would say being able to recharge anything whenever I want. That's a really good one. So, yeah, I think it would just be so useful. You know, your laptop or your Nintendo Switch or something's going to die, and then boom, it's back up. You don't even have to plug it in. I just think that would be a useful kind of weird fringe superpower kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. An electric answer from the rising right shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have anything left to say you want to say to the viewers? Yeah, I'm just really excited. I think it's going to be fun, so watch out and everybody and you're going to see some stuff you don't expect and hopefully you all have some great matches so I'm really excited alrighty well that was Devin with the Rising Right Shoes thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time